a Spurs season ticket holder for 63 years has been ranked in only the third level of priority to choose his seat in the new stadium. Pensioner Tony Sidnick, 73, a regular at White Hart Lane since 1955, without a break, has complained to his local MP he is so upset. The Spurs ticket procedure will see at least 10,000 supporters placed in allocation groups 1 and 2, higher up the queue than Sidnick, who may have attended more Tottenham matches than anyone else alive. Sidnick is down the rankings because Spurs do not have reliable fans data before the 2006-07 season, the date from which they have worked out their priority list. Plus including loyalty points for attending away matches. Harrow East MP Bob Blackman is understood to be very sympathetic with Sidnick's grievance and will be taking his case up with Spurs. Sidnick's son Lewis, another Spurs ticket holder said, my father hasn't been well enough to attend away matches recently. But putting him in phase three after all those years of unbroken support is an absolute disgrace, Tony said, I know there are worse things. But this is my passion and the way Spurs have treated me has had me in tears. Tottenham declined to comment. BBC Radio 5 Live's coverage of Cheltenham was enriched by a cameo appearance on the first day of the meeting by John Frankham. Still the best pundit around, despite not wanting to get involved in working for another TV employer out of loyalty to Andrew Franklin of High Flyer, who lost the racing production contract in 2012. Ian Ritchie, the retired former RFU chief executive, is in the frame to become the next Premiership Rugby chairman. And that will only strengthen the conspiracy theory. Despite the denials that Ritchie left Twickenham for the same alleged reason he previously departed the All England club, not enjoying working under demanding hands-on chairman in Philbrook and Andy Coslett respectively, having been used to little or no interference from on high, certainly Ritchie, who was at the Wasps v Exeter game courting both clubs chairman. Intends being a chairman himself in future, not a CEO. Troubled Premier League club West Ham. Whose last home match featured an ugly fans protest and pitch invasions. At least have the support of shirt sponsors but way. The online gambling company said they are committed to the Hammers for a further two years despite the flood of negative publicity this season. Certain sports sponsorships stay in the public psyche long after the association ends. One of those is the Hennessy Gold Cup at Newbury, which was renamed the Ladbrokes Trophy last year. Even such a polished broadcaster as Nick Luck was still calling it the Hennessy until he corrected himself. When doing a tipping gig for the jockey club at Cheltenham. Meanwhile, at Cheltenham it was ironic that dollar billionaire Michael O'Leary, Chief Executive of Budget Airline Ryanair, received the festival leading owner trophy sponsored by private jet company NestJets. Kelvin McKenzie's Love Sport Radio, which launches on Monday, has a chance to win an immediate following. Especially with the number of listeners who have deserted TalkSport in recent months. So why? Oh why has Kelvin given Boris former England rugby player Brian Moore? a former mediocre talk sport contributor. The platform of a daily afternoon show? Brian Swanson, chief reporter of Sky Sports News, is one senior sports news figure who will not be traveling to the World Cup in Russia, rather than a political protest. Swanson is taking a 12-month secondment to work as the communications chief for the Prince of Wales's charity business in the community.